Welcome to FPV, I'm Max, this is Akela, and this is our brand new channel all about building custom FPV quads. Uh, if you want a chance to win this exact quad, stay tuned, we're gonna tell you at the end of the video how you can win uh, this quad. So this channel is going to be all about building, tuning, flying, and probably a little bit of talk about the culture and um, new, products. new products, that sort of thing. Our vision for this channel is that we are going to build um, quads from new products, um, to test out new things that are coming out, try to stick with trends, maybe test the durability of things, just like an all around build, review, test kind of thing. Um, I really enjoy building, I know you really enjoy building, and it's something that we just really wanted to, it just allows us to build even more. Yeah. Alright, let's get into the video. Okay, so the frame we're using is a uh, open source TBS uh, Team Black Sheep Source 1. The reason we chose this frame is because it's fairly cheap. The arms, I think, are 5 mil carbon, which I've broken a couple. Have you broken any I've arms? never broken any. Never okay. Broken any myself. Sweet. So, yeah, I think it's, like, rare to break them. And if you do, um, it's open source, so you can cut your own if you have the ability to cut carbon, or you can get someone to cut it for you, or you can just order arms. Parts are readily available for this frame. So, these motors are Emax 2306. Uh, which KV did I get? 2400 KV. So, these... The, the Source 1 is definitely a bit of a bigger or a heavier build. So I went with a 2306 motor and it's 2400 kV so it'll be good for a 4S build. We're trying to do a, a budget build but you don't want to cheap out on the components that mean the most. So like your VTX camera, camera we got it. Sure. Yeah, like we'll show the camera in a minute, but camera, like those things you don't want to cheap out. Crossfire, which we do have an FR Sky. Oh, true. Uh, so we can, like whoever wins the quad, we can put that in it if they need it. But I've used these motors for a long time. I've never burnt one out or broken one. And I think for the price, they tear. What else we got, buddy? We got the TBS Unify Pro 32. Why did we choose that? The one watt, for sure. They have a good casing on them too. Yeah, I. <laughs> it's funny, which probably doesn't mean anything, but the reason I nice. chose this in the beginning is because it looks nice and I like the build of it. So next we've got the Cadex Rattel. We both fly these. Yeah. And same thing, it's not the cheapest camera that you can find, but as far as quality goes- It's 100% worth it. It's 100% worth it. Like everyone who we've turned on to these cameras, they love it. Yeah, best analog. Just to, so if you're gonna, if you're in the market for a camera, that guy. Crossfire. TBS Nano RX. So if you're running Crossfire, that's yeah. the jam. 100% switch to Crossfire if you're not already. <laughs> totally. <laughs> it's yeah, you just don't worry anymore about fail safes. Um, some people fail safe when they don't put their their antenna in the right spot. <laughs> but uh, I've never knock on wood, but I've yeah. never fail safed with Crossfire. I, I fail safed once, but I think it was my fault. Or it could have been the Tango 2 in the beginning. Yeah, or firmware know. updates. If you don't order the SE. Uh, it'll just say SE beside it. Um, then you'll get just like the dipole, like weird little mini antenna. And I've always upgraded, which I bought this, it's like five bucks, but I always upgrade to the Mortal T. Definitely, definitely a worthy investment. Uh, antenna, that's for your VTX. True RC, they kill it. <laughs> yeah, Canadian company, uh, we're Canadian, so it's good to support these guys. Most importantly, well, one of the most important things for a flight controller, and ESC, we're going to use the the Mamba stack. So this is the Mamba F4 stack. It's a 30 millimeter by 30 millimeter mount. It's the stack that came with it. I guess I can put it on the screen if there's more information about it because I honestly don't know a whole lot about it. I just see it being recommended a lot. I see a lot of people using them, so I figured we'd put it in the build and see how it goes. Uh, it's rated for up to 6S, so whoever wins Shred. this quad, they could always swap the motors out and, and run it on 6S. Also, I guess we should say, if you know more information about any of the products we're talking about, put it down in the comments because we probably said it already once, but we're not pros at all. Like we're just a couple of dudes that like building and uh, we highly encourage you if you've got more information or if you think we've, uh, you know, 
messed up something. Messed up, which we for sure will. <laughs> like 100%. We're not pretending. We just like building. We just thought we'd make a video or, or a, a series where we're going to build, use new parts, constantly be trying new things. And it just gives people an idea of like, what rather than a pro building it and using it and like all these videos aren't sponsored like yeah. we we purchased all these things we don't have anything to gain from trying to sell you any of these parts we're just going to use parts and uh what fly fly shred <laughs> it all right so that's the stack and then we've got a couple random things yeah what are those we've got some capacitors <laughs> i don't have a very technical explanation other than it helps reduce noise yeah. on from your ESCs so your motors and your ESCs and all that power you can get noise on your analog feed so it could be like lines and then something that I haven't used but I've been meaning to use uh, Loctite we should all be using this and for sure on your motors motor yeah. uh, screws um, really on anything that you're gonna not be the messing D with. yeah the DJI uh, it comes with Loctite on the, the camera screws that go in. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, for sure motor screws. So let's open this up and start with that. We're gonna need some tools. One thing we should mention while you do that, there was some drama of, I think it was race day quads. I don't know, someone put it, maybe someone can say it down in the comments, but one of the companies, like one of the stores in the States was cutting their own frames. Mm of the Source One and then packaging them as TBS Source Ones. Sketchy. <laughs> and it wasn't as good of carbon or whatever. There's been some shady stuff with this frame of like other people cutting it. So just be careful. Check that out. The, the frame even comes with your own battery grip. Most frames don't come with battery grip. Um, man, you're gonna assemble this, right? I guess so. Base, top, sandwich piece. Sandwich piece, <laughs> yeah. Just a couple of dudes building a quad. Okay. We need a tagline like, you're gonna learn something today. Freak. We'll do it and it'll fly, but <laughs> we're gonna make like a bunch of mistakes along the way. <laughs> yeah, it's called FPV, build FPV. It's not build FPV like a pro. No, It's like read the title. <laughs> yeah, read the title, it's build FPV. We're gonna build a drone or a quad. It's gonna fly. It'll fly. And yeah. That's all we're promising. That's all we're promising. There's not a lot of promise to this <laughs> channel. All right, so the next thing we're going to do while Akela gets that, those final screws in, we're going to get the motors on next. I like to do as far as like, like when I'm doing a brand new build, I go frame, then I go motors, then I go ESC, and then from that point, solder the motor wires to the SC, solder your XT60 or whatever power jump. Yeah. And then we're gonna check for any shorts with the multimeter. And then at that point you check it out. Because yeah. if you have a short at that point, you don't wanna attach anything more to it. Don't wanna and then we'll break use a more. smoke stopper. Yeah, exactly. The motors come with... They come with screws? Screws, three millimeter, four millimeter. So if you're building the Source One, use the, uh, the package that says four millimeter arms on it. Yeah, that looks good. Did you crank them? I'm gonna put them on and then crank them okay. real good. After. Um, yeah, one thing about motors, um, like a mistake that I've made, is if you crank too hard, which you can, you strip out the inside of the, the motor. One of the things for this channel that we're planning on doing is for every build that we do, we're not gonna give away every single quad that we build, otherwise we just go broke and lose our homes. Um, but we are going to give away something from the build every single time. So every month there's gonna be a giveaway. All right, standoffs on, motors on. It'd almost be kind of comical if we like fried something. <laughs> okay, so let's stick that on there and then look at it from the side. And it looks like it's gonna fit, no problem. Yeah. So you wanna make sure that your stack isn't anywhere near touching the top of your frame when you're doing it because you can have problems. Vibrations, shorts, whatever the fuck. You just it's don't, not, it's just, just it's not, not ideal. Good. It's just not good. Like a lot of people like they'll be tuning and trying to figure out what's going on and they've got like their, their stack rammed against the top and it just doesn't work well. So what's the next move for us? I guess we got to put the ESC on. Yeah. So we should probably take it apart. We're gonna start with our battery leads because you can't do anything without power. So 
Did this not come with a battery lead? I don't either? think it came with a battery lead. Wow, man. Oh wait, we got we got. Is one. there a battery lead in there? We got an okay. XT60. We're just. And we got a little cable. Whoa, it's that's not connected. So tiny, hey. But and it came with a little capacitor too. Oh, it came with a capacitor. What's that one? 470 UF, 35 volts. So way smaller. Way smaller. 470. Yeah, 470. And this is one. How many volts? 35. Okay, so this is 35 volt 1000. We're gonna build it assuming that we're just building it out of the package. I did actually go ahead and buy the bigger ones with it to use it, but for now let's, I think you're right. I guess I should talk about these. I got these in a trade. They don't cost very much. Pretty worth it. That's like for what they are, I think they're called helping hands. You can get like, I think these ones are like five bucks, maybe 10 bucks, something like that. We've got negative, we've got positive. Do we use these? I guess we have to use them. Yeah, I guess they'll reach. That's actually quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. You definitely want like some relief though, right? That's the thing. You always want, you never just want it like tight and then tied. So if you rip something, it's just going to rip right off. And the battery pad doesn't have an extra one. Yeah. Like the motors have the extra pads, but the battery pad does not. I like to use a little bit of flux. So this has flux in the core, but Especially with battery leads, I think it's good to put a little bit of, of flux on. It helps a lot too with your soldering. Like I noticed it helps yeah, a lot. Yeah, it just makes it so much nicer. It's like shiny, it like flows better. It's just all around better. So I'm just looking right here. It says negative right there, positive right there. So here's my negative. So I don't pretend to be uh, the best solder in the world, but it'll fly. It'll fly. <laughs> <laughs> you obviously want your solder joints to be as best, as good as possible. Battery leads are kind of the hardest to do because they're so big. I'm using a TS100 pen. I'm using Team Black Sheep solder. I don't know. I don't have any opinion about the solder. It seems to work. The iron's good. It's a lot better than... Don't buy a, one off like Amazon. Definitely just spend the money and get one of those. Yeah, exactly. That's better. That looks pretty good. Something like that. Probably hold it like that. I'm gonna put a bunch more solder on this pad. Always finicky. Everything Super. about this hobby, finicky. Dude, if you're just like, in general, a shaky human, it's it's hard to do. All right, deep breaths, Max. We're gonna get this one on. There we go. That's better. Yeah, so you do get like a bunch of flux, kind of nastiness all over the place when you're using it liberally like I am. Um, but it wipes off really easy with like a Q-tip and some isopropanol alcohol. All right, so that's that. I probably should have put this on first, but I guess we might as well do that next. And these say on them too, you've got positive and negative. And the way that I remember is the negative is like the bent end, like the rounded end. I never even thought about that. So that's negative. If you put it on backwards and you plug this in, poofta. Okay, so. That looks good. There's that one. Looking dece. Go, 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 go. That looks pretty soldered to me. I'm not gonna go any more than that. We're going above and beyond here, which most people won't have, but this is a piece of shrink wrap. And then I'm gonna use clear wrap. Clear wrap for in between them. Alternatively, what you could do is just hot glue around the whole thing to keep the two contacts. Okay, heat gun. Heat gun it up. We now have an ESC that has power to it. Negative to black, red to positive. Negative, I covered it, but negative is on the side that's the curved side positive on the right angled square side and I heat shrunk it just to make it a little bit cleaner. Um, I don't know what you would do normally if you didn't have that. I guess the heat, the glue. So I think that we probably want to throw these guys in here. Yeah. That's personally how I like it. That's how we do with the Radix and the- That's the move. So we'll throw those in. Do you want to do those? Sure. While you do that, yeah, here, I'll, I'll I'm going to give that. you these. There's extra long screws. There's a bunch of good stuff here. There's options, we got options. Okay, so we're gonna crank this down, but not too tight. Okay, so that's now what it looks like. And then you've got 
you're throwing gummies on, and then I'm gonna throw a nut on this, and hopefully that's enough. Okay, so those four stack screws are on. Now I'm gonna put a couple nuts, nylon nuts, and this just allows the ESC to sit really close to the frame without touching it. If anyone's looking to order hardware, this size that fits, it's M3. Okie dokie, okay, so Akela's got the, uh, the gummies on. We've got the power on. I've got these nuts on. So now let's do a quick little dry fit. The way that you can tell the front of the Source 1 is these two little slots right here. Well, or the antenna too. Or the antenna slot, which what, it goes out the bottom? <laughs> well, if you have no mount, you can toss it up top. Oh, okay. Like the same I see. same I on the top. I see. On every flight controller, there should be an arrow that points to the front of the quad. You can, if you need to, flip it upside down, turn it sideways. You can orient this any way you want, but it just means that in beta flight, you would have to like remap your motors or sometimes like you have to. It's gonna make it harder. It right? just makes it harder. Long story short, it makes it harder. If you don't harder. have to do it, don't do it. Sorry to the people that are watching this, but I am going to use some of my aftermarket hardware just to make this easier on us. Let's put a couple squishies on. We just have so much room. Why don't you put a couple more, maybe just one clear one on each one. Single squish? Yeah. I just wanna like dry fit it. Like you should, a lot of people dry fit everything before they start. I've built the source one enough that I feel comfortable that we can just kind of build and kind of as we go. But I do wanna see how this stack is going to sit. Holy, it's pretty, pretty tight. Well, once you put it down though, once, once you push it down, it gives it some relief. Yeah. I would, okay, so that's what we'll do. I would go with a smaller standoff, but we don't have it. It'll fly. It'll fly. <laughs> <laughs> that should totally be the logo. It'll fly. <laughs> like, it's just gonna be build FPV, it'll fly. Like, that's the one thing that we guarantee is that it will fly. 100%. And it'll fly well. Okay, so next up we have motor wires. So you want to measure them out. And they have to go there, but you obviously want some relief, right? Definitely a little bit, for sure. So a lot of, some people go like this and they come in. We're not gonna do anything crazy fancy for this build. We're gonna keep it super simple. I like to choose a point that I just measure, like I pull them tight to, and then I just cut them all to the same point without going too long. I'm gonna do the um, tinning. tinning. Depending on your fingernail length, I don't, really ha <laughs> I don't have any fingernails, but you should be able to just kind of like... Just rip it right off. Yeah, so it doesn't, I, I use these, but it just depends, like a lot of people can use their finger length. So I take that much, you don't need a lot. Yeah. Like a lot of beginners, that's where they go wrong. They're like scared to like not have enough wire or something, or they think yeah. the more the better, so then they Minimal, have like... Minimal, you don't things. need anything. You need hardly anything. You just yeah. need a good connection. And you're soldering them, so it's not like you're like, yeah, you're not doing... I made that mistake a lot when I first... Yeah. Everything I'd solder would be too long. Yeah. You really don't need much at all. Another thing is, if you go too long, you you tin it, and it's a little bit too long, then you just cut it before you solder it on. Yeah. Like, you can technically go a little longer, but in our case, we don't need to do that. Whenever you're trying to do a solder connection from here to a pad, you have to tin your pad first, and you tin your wire first and then you just connect the two and you don't really have to add any more solder yeah. if you have enough solder on your pad you just touch it and it goes yeah makes it way easier too way easier so we are going to put this stuff on the motor wires so this is kind of what we're shooting for it just cleans up your build just Looks hide good. it also helps if you like snag a tree or something branch. yeah it just keeps the motor wires from getting caught on anything and i don't know it looks kind of cool we need four of these i don't even know what you call this braided wire sheath <laughs> That's what I'm going with. Sounds good. I was gonna go with uh, those like Indian finger traps or whatever <laughs> those are. So. Chinese finger trap? Yeah. Chinese finger trap works too. <laughs> I've got a lighter. So what you gotta do is give it one of those. Otherwise it comes apart. I literally touched it and, and it's, it's already come coming apart. apart. And then you just heat shrink it on, man. Look at that. Tidy. Okay. So the next step we need to do is just put these on, and then at that point we're gonna check for um, any shorts. Yeah. 
Yeah, to continuity test. Make sure there's nothing that shouldn't be touching. And then we'll uh, use a smoke stopper, plug it in, send it on its way. See how she goes. Here we go. One wire, two wire, three wires. That's not the best I've ever done. Hold that in place. Hit it with some flux. Hold that in place. Hit it with some flux. See how much nicer it looks? So much better. So you can go from like a shitty looking solder joint to like a not so shitty solder joint. And cleaning your tip and putting some more solder on. Cleaning your tip, especially. I think, I think too, that helps, helps a lot. for sure. So whenever I touch up a joint, what I'm doing is I put a little bit of solder on the joint. If I was just to hit this, it would just pop off. So you actually have to take your tweezers and I'm holding it down, putting pressure downwards. And then I re I just touch it with the soldering iron and then I let go and it just does it. So I have heard in the past that um, flux can be conductive. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, so whenever I use like more, like a decent amount of flux, I like to, before I plug it in for the first time, I like to clean my board. All my joints, give it a quick little clean. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. Then I dry it off. Here, let's get this going with some compressed air. Hmm, that chemical air smell. Don't you love it? It's like ISO mixed with chemical air. Okay, this is the multimeter we're using. It was like a 20 or $30 one off Amazon. Um, this is the symbol you're looking for. And to know that if it's testing for um, continuity, when you touch your sticks together, it beeps. So if this is touching, if black and red are touching anywhere on here, they're gonna beep. So I'll let you do the honors. So we'll test it through there. And so he's, Akela's touching both the contacts inside the XT60 connector, and we're not getting um, any beeps. So that's a good thing. We're good. We're good. Oh, we should put a cap on this thing. Yeah. Before we go any further. Well, you know what? We did that, so let's just plug it in. In theory, there shouldn't be any shorts anyways, but I always use... I got this. It's a Team Black Sheep smoke stopper. I don't know if this works or not because I've never had a short, <laughs> but I use it. And then you'll see me use this, which you don't need to use this, but all this is is just a, a switch. So, yeah, we're just going to plug this in like this. Now it's protected by the smoke stopper. Let's just double check that we know what we're doing. We've... There's no continuity, everything's attached, it should work. What we're looking for when we turn this on is uh, every motor should beep yeah. on us, right? Do you wanna do the honors? Let's hope for the best. Yeah, I felt that one go. Turn it off, do it again. Hold on, go again. Yeah, and then I saw that one twitch and then go this one. Yeah, I feel it. it's light, but it's there. Nice. Okay, so that means uh, everything is working. So far, so good. All right, so I think that's gonna wrap it up for this video. We've spent uh, quite a lot of time and I think this video is probably going on a little too long. Oh, she's long. So we're gonna make a part two for the rest of this build. Um, but if you guys wanna win this, comment below and subscribe and share it with your friends. And once we hit a thousand subscribers, we're gonna give away this build the five inch, well, that's what we just worked on. Yeah, yeah, thousand subscribers, we're giving it away to someone. So if you wanna see the rest of it being built. Part two. Um, part two. And comment below, chance to win this. All right, see ya next week. See ya. Bye.